This is an NBC News special report. Here's Kristen Welker. Good day. We are coming on the air with breaking news about the war in Israel. President Biden about to address the deadly overnight attacks. Let's listen in. We will not ever fail to have their back. We'll make sure that they have the help their citizens need and they can continue to defend themselves. You know, the world's seen appalling images. Thousands of rockets in a space of hours raining down on Israeli cities. I got up this morning and started this at 7.30, 8 o'clock, my calls. Hamas terrorists crossing in Israel, killing not only Israeli soldiers, but Israeli civilians. In the street, in their homes, innocent people murdered, wounded, entire families taken hostage by Hamas. Just days after Israel marked the holiest of days in the Jewish calendar. It's unconscionable. You know, when I spoke with Prime Minister Netanyahu this morning, I told him the United States stands with the people of Israel in the face of these terrorist assaults. Israel has the right to defend itself and its people. Full stop. There's never justification for terrorist attacks. And my administration's support for Israel's security is rock solid and unwavering. Let me say this as clearly as I can. This is not a moment for any party hostile to Israel to exploit these attacks to seek advantage. The world is watching. I've also been in contact with the King of Jordan, spoke with members of Congress, directed my national security team to engage with their Israeli counterparts, military to military, intelligence to intelligence, dipl diplomat to diplomat, to make sure Israel has what it needs. I've also directed my team to remain in constant contact with leaders throughout the region, including Egypt, Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Oman, the UAE, as well as our European partners and the Palestinian Authority. It's also a terrible tragedy on a human level. It's hurting innocent people, seeing the lives that have been broken by this, the families torn apart. It's heartbreaking. And Jill and I are praying for those families who have been impacted by this violence. We grieve with those who've lost their loved ones, lost a piece of their soul. We have hope for a swift recovery for many who have been wounded. But we're going to remain in close touch with Prime Minister. I personally am going to remain in close contact with Prime Minister Netanyahu as this situation continues to develop. And let there be no mistake, the United States stands with the state of Israel. Just we have from the moment the United States became the first nation to recognize Israel 11 minutes after its founding 75 years ago. Thank you very much. Mr. President, was there uh, an intelligence failure in the lead up to this attack? Mr. President, can you tell us what the specifically President Biden not responding to shouted questions, but condemning the attacks in Israel by Hamas in the strongest terms saying that he has witnessed appalling images, also saying we will not ever fail to have Israel's back and Israel has the right to defend itself and its people full stop, detailing some of the horror that has unfolded, including entire families, he says, who have been taken hostage. Let's bring in senior White House correspondent Kelly O'Donnell, who's been listening to all of this. Kelly, what were your big takeaways from what we heard from the president? Kristen, I'm struck by the president sending a warning to others who might use this moment, see vulnerability and crisis and chaos in Israel because of these attacks and try to exploit that. The president making clear that that would not be tolerated and talking about the outreach going on to other nations with whom the United States has partnership in the Middle East. So while Israel is facing one crisis, the president trying to uh, forestall any other cascading effects that could follow this kind of violence and instability. The president also making a point that he will personally stay in touch with Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel. That, of course, on its face makes perfect sense, but it is also important because we know from covering this relationship, which has spanned 40 years, and in recent years, there has been some tension between President Biden and the prime minister over some of the governmental and judicial changes Netanyahu has tried to bring about in the modern state of Israel. That putting aside now and really making clear that the U.S. will provide whatever support is needed. Already the U.S. is the largest partner in terms of military protection for Israel. The president emphasized that from the nation of Israel's inception, the U.S. has been a partner. 
So we also know that there have been other kinds of diplomatic efforts that have been ongoing prior to today. Things like trying to normalize relations with Saudi Arabia following some of the other nations in that region. All of that question marks remain. We also know by having the president's secretary of state at his shoulder that he is also making calls to partners, allies and outreach uh, around the world. So the phones are working here at the White House in terms of diplomatic outreach, both to international partners. The president also indicated to congressional leaders and the volatility of this situation. Uh, implicit in what our reporting tells us is the United States was not anticipating this attack. Multiple sources have told NBC News that. The president, even by his own comments about being surprised and awakened this morning, suggests that's the case. That will raise questions about what could come next. And obviously there are tactical and strategic questions about how Israel will respond and how the U.S. can support that response because of the civilian lives that are at stake here. But the president was clear, Israel has the right to defend its people and its land, and we can expect developments and a lot of changes about how this is unfolding uh, over the next 24 hours. This will remain a very active situation for the White House. The vice president's been in touch with the president today as well, Kristen, as you would expect, and uh, you can expect the situation room is uh, up and running. Absolutely. Kelly O'Donnell, appreciate that. And of course, you and some of our other colleagues, in addition to everything you've just laid out, Courtney Cuby and others reporting the U.S. is discussing enhancing their intelligence sharing with Israelis to support with the Israeli government. Kelly, very briefly, before I get to Raf Sanchez in Israel, what can you tell us about that? Well, certainly the partnership between U.S. intelligence and Mossad and the Israeli intelligence is a long and strong one. Amplifying that now is certainly critical for things like was there, the president was asked, was there an intelligence failure? It's sort of implicit in this that a surprise attack, surprise always uh, one of the tools of war that is most effective. How can they now step in and try to increase support for knowing what is happening on the ground, what additional threats are there, how to rescue civilians who've been taken hostage, and next steps. So a more robust American response helping Israel on this certainly would be in line with the partnership we've seen. Kristen? And, of course, those next steps will be in focus here in Washington, and it comes against the backdrop of Congress at a standstill, just having ousted its Speaker of the House. Let me get to Raf Sanchez, who is in Israel and has been reporting on the developments throughout the day. Raf, bring us up to speed here. What's the very latest in terms of where you are, including in terms of death toll and how many people we understand to have been kidnapped? Yeah, Kristen. Well, even as the president was speaking at the White House, this violent, chaotic situation continues to unfold here in southern Israel. Literally in the last minute, we were just seeing the bright lights of the Israeli Iron Dome missile interceptors streaking through the sky, taking down a barrage of rockets that have just been fired from Gaza. This, Kristen, is a nightmare that Israelis do not seem able to wake up from. This is, on the one hand, a very large-scale surprise attack with a very large-scale loss of life. The official figures from the Israeli emergency services are that 70 Israelis are confirmed dead, more than 800 are wounded. But I can tell you, people here expect that that number is going to rise further still, just based on these truly harrowing images we are seeing on social media of bodies, both Israeli civilians and soldiers in the streets. But Kristen, at the same time, this is also a hostage crisis on a scale Israel has perhaps never seen before. And I want to be really specific about what I'm talking about here. I just got off the phone with an Israeli security official who tells me there are two hostage situations still unfolding inside of Israeli communities down by the Gaza border. So these are Palestinian gunmen who remain holed up, who have Israeli hostages at gunpoint. They are surrounded by Israeli special forces who are trying to free them. But, Kristen, the more complicated part of this is that there are, according to the Israeli military, both Israeli soldiers and Israeli civilians who have been taken captive inside of Israel and then taken back over the border into Gaza. And they are now in captivity under the control of Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad inside of Gaza. And, Kristen, it is that dynamic that is the key part 
of trying to figure out where this situation goes next. The Israeli military is making clear that all options are on the table, including a full-scale ground invasion of Gaza to bring its people home. And the fact that there are Israelis, both civilians and soldiers, being held inside of Gaza tonight will weigh very, very heavily on the minds of decision makers from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on downwards as they try to plan their next steps. Kristen. And Raf, we have less than a minute here, but just talk about what potential next steps could be. We understand there is discussion potentially of a unity government. Of course, that comes against the backdrop of a fair amount of instability and backlash amidst Prime Minister Netanyahu's judicial reforms, right? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of what's happening right now, we are seeing Israeli aircraft striking inside of the Gaza Strip. The Palestinian Health Ministry says more than 200 people have been killed so far inside of Gaza from those strikes. We don't know what the breakdown is of civilians and militants, but the next step, potentially, Kristen, is preparing for an all-out ground invasion. Kristen. All right, Ralph Sanchez, thank you so much for your incredible reporting throughout the day. That concludes the special report. We'll have much more tonight on NBC Nightly News, tomorrow on Meet the Press, and always at NBCNews.com. I'm Kristen Welker. Good day.